morning students my name is chsv prasad rao and i am working as senior lecturer in electrical department at government polytechnic yadigir kutta so in ac motors subject we are handling the chapter 4 that is characteristics of pre phase induction motor so in the previous class we have discussed about construction working principle what are the types of rotors we have and what are the power equation torque equation rotor current and emf these things we have covered so in the last class so we uh, covered what is the induction motor what is the construction so what are the parts of as we, as we covered induction motor has two main parts so one is stator and another one is rotor the stationary part is called stator and the rotating part is called rotor so the stator is a cylindrical shaped hollow cylindrical structure made with laminations of steel steel having slots on the inner periphery the insulated conductors are placed in the stator slots and are connected to a balanced three phase star delta connected circuit and all the six terminals of the three phase winding are brought out and they are connected to terminal blocks which is connected to a input supply the three phase stator winding is wound for definite number of holes as per the speed requirement greater the number of holes lesser the speed and vice versa so when we give a three phase supply to a three phase stator winding then it produces a rotating magnet field whose which is running at a synchronous speed and its magnitude is equal to 1.5 times the maximum flux so at any instant if you see at any instant the resultant flux pi r is equal to 1.5 times the maximum flux and it is rotating at a synchronous speed ns is equal to 120 fy p it is rotating at a synchronous speed so so this uh, the uh, stator and if you go for a rotor the rotating part is called rotor and there are two types of rotor squirrel cage rotor and phase bound rotor in squirrel cage rotor the rotor contains slots on the outer periphery of the surface and it is a cylindrical steel uh, laminated steel cylinder having slots on the outer periphery 
So in case of spiral case rotor, so it contains say a copper or aluminium bars. They are placed on the slots. The rotor conductors needs to be insulated from the core. So the rotor bars are short circuited at both ends by end rings. And another thing is the rotor slots are not made parallel to the rotor shaft axis. They are skewed at a certain angle to reduce magnetic noise during working. Sometimes he will ask why the rotor slots are not made parallel to the axis. That is to reduce, to produce uniform torque and to reduce magnetic noise during working and uh, to prevent uh, possible magnetic locking also called cogging of the rotor with the stator. So as the and as they are on both ends they are connected and rings it is not possible to add any external distance. Next one is phase bound rotor. It contains laminated cylinder core having slots on the outer periphery and it is provided with a three phase distributed winding in the insulated rotor slots similar to stator winding. The rotor is wound as many number of poles as the stator poles and is always wound for three phase supply even the stator is two two phase so in phase bound rotor the three binding terminals of the stator are brought out and they are connected to a slip rings one side of the slip rings which are mounted on the same shaft of the rotor. On the other side of the slip rings brushes are placed. To that brushes we can connect external resistance in star connection. So these resistance will be there external resistance only at the time of starting. When the motor reaches 90% of the speed the slip rings are short circuited and the external resistance is removed and the brushes are lifted. So this is the main difference between squirrel case rotor and phase bound rotor. In squirrel case rotor it's not possible to add any external resistance. In phase bound rotor we can add some external resistance at the time of starting. So because of this one what is the importance means we can limit the high starting current as well as we increase the starting torque. So this is the main difference. So when we give the, if you see the working principle of the induction motor, if you give a supply to a three phase stator binding, then a rotating magnetic field of constant magnitude is produced. And this stator flux passes through the air and cuts the rotor conductors. So then what happened according to 
Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction and EMF is induced in the rotor conductors. What he says, he says when a conductor cuts the magnetic field or magnetic field cuts the conductor, then an EMF is induced in the rotor conductors. As the rotor conductors are in the form of a closed path, current starts to flow through the rotor conductors. When current is flowing through the rotor conductors, then armature flux is produced around the rotor conductors. So the stator flux and the rotor flux, there are two fluxes there. If you take any one conductor, so as the stator flux is passes from north pole to south pole and rotor pole rotor flux is around the rotor conductors and it rotates in anti clockwise direction if you notice the flux direction of stator flux and rotor flux on the right hand side of the conductor both are in opposite direction whereas in left hand side of the conductor both are in the same direction that is downward then what happened the flux on the right hand side of the conductor is weakened and the flux on the left hand side of the conductor is strengthened so then what happened is strengthened then as the property of the magnetic lines it always tries to pass through a pass as a straight conductors then it pushes the rotor conductors to the forward direction that is towards the right hand side so likewise all the conductors on the rotor experience a force which pushes the rotor conductors in anti-clockwise direction as a result when the rotor conductors are trying to rotate then simultaneously then simultaneously the rotor also starts rotates when the rotor rotates it cuts more stator flux then according to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction the rate of change of flux is more and the induced emf is more then what happened the current is more torque is more then speed is increases simultaneously when the speed increases automatically it cut more flux then rate of change of flux increases induced emf increases current increases torque increases speed increases likewise the synchronous motor synchronous motor picks up the speed and reaches to its maximum speed which is less than synchronous speed the induction motor never runs at a synchronous speed always it rotates less than synchronous speed so and we derived the equation for torque and rotor current and induced emf so here two types of conditions two types of emfs everything is two conditions one is standstill condition and the other one is running condition so we derived the torque we derived starting torque maximum torque full load torque and we derived the relation between these three starting torque maximum torque 
fullo torque maximum torque and we derived the condition for maximum torque that is r2 is equal to sx2 that is rotor resistance is equal to rotor reactance under running condition r2 is equal to sx2 and the frequency of the rotor fr is equal to s into f and uh, induced emf under running condition is equal to s into e2 so similarly everything cos phi is equal to r2 by zr what is zr sink impedance under running conditions so zr is equal to square root of r2 square plus sx2 whole square so today we will draw the curve between torque and slip as we derived according to the slip the torque changes and we can find the torque in synchronous watts also so torque speed characteristics under load so even the induction motor is operating at a stable condition then linear operation of its torque speed curves are produced the slope of this straight line depends mainly on the rotor resistance higher the resistance sharp the slope so this relation between torque and speed are shown in figure and that enables us to establish a very simple equation between different parameters of an induction motor so this is the curve how it is showing speed is on the x axis torque is on the y axis here you can see, see the breakdown torque what is the meaning of breakdown torque breakdown torque is the maximum torque where the induction motor can withstand after this torque the motor is not possible to bear any load so after this it comes a it torque falls and the motor stops that is the sear the speed is zero this is the maximum torque so beyond that it is not possible to bear so from this characteristics t1 is the torque at a speed of n1 t2 is the speed at st2 is the torque at speed n2 this is the synchronous speed ns it never runs at synchronous speed always its speed is less than synchronous speed if it is rotated at synchronous speed then what is the torque the torque is zero it is not going to produce any torque if the speed is synchronous speed that's why induction motor never runs at synchronous speed note down the characters draw the figure speed is on x axis and torque is on y axis so this is the breakdown torque or maximum torque that means the maximum torque which a 
motor can withstand. Which motor can withstand? Draw the figure. So next, if you see the characteristics, so this is the speed on the x-axis and current on the y-axis. Here it is showing the torque on one side and on the other side showing the current. Here it shows the current, it shows the torque. See here how it is showing the blue one is full voltage, full voltage starting starting torque and this red one is full voltage state or current. This is torque and this is current. This is the, here it is showing the torque one side and it is showing the current on one side. On the x-axis it is a speed. So here it shows the speed and the torque. So here shows the both. How it is increases. Slowly see here this is the maximum speed that is 15 1400 so see here uh, below this one 1400 is the rated speed and after that it is showing the torque equation torque versus speed so the parameters under two different load conditions are shown by the equation s2 is equal to S1 into T2 by T1 into R2 by R1 into V1 by V2 whole square. The only restriction in applying the Ebo equation is that the new torque T2 must not be greater than T1 into V2 by V1 whole square. In this case, the Ebo equation can accuracy of better than 5%, which is sufficient for all practical purpose. Complete torque speed curve. We have already seen that a three phase machine can be run as a motor when it takes electric power and supplies mechanical power. The direction of torque and rotor rotation are in the same direction. The same machine can be used as an asynchronous generator when driven at speed greater than synchronous speed the direction of rotor the direction of torque and rotor rotation are in the same direction the same machine can be used as a synchronous generator when driven at a speed greater than synchronous speed. So in case, in this case, it receives mechanical energy in the rotor and supplies electrical energy from the stator. The torque and speed are oppositely directed. Next point, the same machine can also be used as a 
break during the plug-in period. The three modes of operation are shown in the figure 2 that is torque slip curve. Note down this one. Figure it shows from synchronous speed to the full load torque. It will work as a motor. After this breakdown torque, it is in a breakdown. Suppose if it is working above the synchronous speed, then it works as a generator. So below the synchronous speed, it works as a motor. Above the synchronous speed, it will work as a generator. So here how it is showing the power stages it is showing for generator how is the power stages for motor power stages for a brake motor how is the power stages it is showing. So that means the motor can be worked as a induction motor and a generator according to its speed if speed is less than synchronous speed then it will work as motor and if the speed is greater than synchronous speed then it work as generator note down the figure Torque and speed characteristics of synchronous motor. So, what it shows so, this is the cross torque developed by the induction motor. So what you understand from this torque slip curve? So when we draw the figure, so how we can draw the figure? First we have to take the torque equation and, and by assuming certain values of R2, X2 and K value by changing the slip value 0, 1, 2, 3, like that. 0, sorry, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, up to 1, that is synchronous speed. You calculate the torque value. And if you draw the curve between torque on y axis and speed on x axis, then we can get torque slip character 6 and we can observe the following points what are there when the speed is synchronous speed that is nr is equal to ns when then what happened if nr is equal to ns then slip is equal to 0 torque is equal to 0 so in induction motor when the speed d when the speed is equal to synchronous speed that is ns is equal to nr is equal to ns then slip is equal to 0 torque is equal to 0 next when the load increases slowly if load increases what happened the speed decreases and slip increases then the slip will be very small. So the value of x2 is very small compared to r2. So t is proportional to s. So that means for low value of slip, the dark slip, the torque slip curve is represented as a straight line. So next, as the load increases, 
speed decreases so slip and torque increases what is the meaning of that one as load increases speed decreases speed decreases slip increases when slip increases torque increases and reaches to maximum value of torque that is s is equal to r2 by x2 at this condition the torque available is called maximum torque or breakdown torque or pull out torque so so this shows in torque slip curve we can note down the point the maximum torque is known as breakdown torque and pull out torque that is beyond this one the torque is not there the motor is not going to run next part next further if we increase the slip beyond t maximum then what happened as we seen at we see uh, as we just seen in the characteristics then the torque decreases as the slip increases the sx2 increases approximately as r2 so torque and slip are inversely proportional to each other hence torque slip curve is a rectangular hyperbola how is the characteristics there it is a rectangle hyperbola so at what is the meaning of that one that is zero slip means rotor rotates at synchronous speed ns and slip is equal to 1 when slip is equal to 1 means speed is zero the torque function of rotor speed can also be shown in the figure the direction of increase in slip is opposite to the direction of increase in rotor speed the magnitude of torque at zero speed is called zero speed means the motor is not rotating at the time of starting this torque is called starting torque so starting torque developed by the rotor should be more than the torque required by the load connected to the motor shaft to enable the to enable the motor to start to start the load the magnitude of starting torque and maximum torque depends on the rotor resistance on the torque slip curve of an induction motor so from this the gross torque of induction motor is equal to, this we have derived that is p2 is equal um, tg is equal to tp by 2 pi ns where p2 is equal to rotor by stator turns ratio per phase and i2 rotor uh, i2 rotor current is equal to s e2 by square root of r2 square plus s x2 whole square where k is a rotor and stator ratio per phase so then the equation becomes like this note down this so that is a 3 sc square r2 by r2 square plus s x2 whole square also p2 is equal to both terms s square 
k square e square r2 by r2 square plus xx2 whole square into 1 by s so that is called 3 into k and k square into e square to into r2 divided by r2 square plus sx2 whole square so tg is equal to p2 by 2 pi ns substitute here this value in terms of e2 or what is k that is 3 by 2 pi ns yes k2 square e square r2 by r2 square plus sx2 whole square note down this torque equation at the time of starting and when it is running okay note down this so these equations are in terms of e1 so here e1 e2 r2 x2 all represents phase value so k is equal to constant of the machine hence the torque equation becomes tg is equal to k into s e1 square by r2 by r2 square plus sx2 whole square it is clear from the above relation that torque is proportional to rotor input by defining a new input new unit of the torque instead of four set radius unit we can say that the rotor torque is equal to rotor input the new units is synchronous watts so we can write like this we can say that the a synchronous motor is developing a torque of 1000 synchronous watts we remain that uh, rotor input is 1000 watts and uh, that torque is such that power developed would be 100 watts provided the rotor were running synchronously and uh, develops the same torque or we can say synchronous watts is the torque which at the synchronous speed of the machine under running condition will develop a power in synchronous watts so power in rotor input p2 is equal to torque in synchronous watts into 2 pi ns so synchronous watts torque in synchronous watts is equal to rotor input p2 by 2 pi by synchronous speed so speed is equal to 1 by omega s into ns by n into pg that is equal to 1 by omega s ns by n into pg note down this note down the equation synchronous watts of an induction motor equals the power transferred across the air gap to the 
rotor. Torque in synchronous words is called rotor input that is called rotor copper losses by yes that is gas gross rotor power pm by 1 minus yes at s is equal to 1 the torque in synchronous words is equal to the rotor copper losses because at standstill entire rotor input is lost in copper losses so summary we given a gross torque what is the gross torque p2 by 2 pi ns so that is equal to 3 by 2 pi ns by pi ns into 3 e2 square r2 by r2 square plus sx2 whole square so torque in synchronous words is equal to rotor input that is called rotor copper losses by yes so that is called gross rotor output by 1 minus yes so in this chapter in today's class what he will ask that means he will ask define synchronous words that is a short question and next he will ask explain torque versus speed characteristics of induction motor under load okay these two questions we can expect first one is small question this one is a big question he will give for five marks or ten marks this one he can give one mark or two mark so take the assignment for tomorrow and note down problem a three phase 400 by 200 volts star star connected wound rotor induction motor has this is not hyphen by mistake i've written it is 0 0.06 ohms rotor resistance and 0 0.3 ohms standstill reactance per phase find the additional distance required in the rotor circuit to make the starting torque equal to maximum torque of the motor so what he given he given a three phase 400 by 200 volts star star connected phase wound rotor induction motor has 0 0.06 rotor resistance so here he given the three phase and he given the voltage 400 by 200 volts Rotor resistance is R2 0 0.06 and standstill reactance X2 is equal to 0 0.3 and he is asking find the additional resistance required in the rotor circuit to make the starting torque is equal to maximum torque so that is tst by note down i will tell the formula tst by t max is equal to 2a by 1 plus a square what is a a is equal to r2 by x2 just substitute in this one you will get the extra resistance how much we have to add as both torques are equal you will get one quadratic equation 
and from there you can get the a value so a is equal to r2 by x2 x2 is this one you will get r2 total distance from this you require 0 0.06 you will get the additional distance to be added it is simple problem next next problem a 746 kilowatts three phase 50 heads 16 pole induction motor has a rotor impedance of this is not hyphen this is point 0 0.02 plus j 0 0.15 where 0 0.02 is the rotor resistance and 0 0.15 is the reactance x2 this is r2 and this is x2 r2 is equal to 0 0.02 x2 is equal to 0.15 at a standstill full load torque is obtained at 360 rpm that is full load torque is obtained at this speed calculate first bit the ratio of full load torque next one is the speed at maximum torque next one is the rotor resistance to be added to get maximum starting torque so it says how much third bit says how much distance we have to add to get maximum torque at starting here we have to use the same formula tst by tm is equal to 2a by 1 plus a square we have to do this one so here you will get the synchronous speed here is the nr from this you will get s Proof from there you can uh, take the uh, a ratio of full load torque and next speed at maximum torque that is a speed at maximum torque that is a you will get r2 by x2 and calculate nr and this one is you use t starting by t maximum is equal to a by 1 plus a square do do this two problems and read the today torque slip characteristics if you have any doubt ask me in the next class okay you have to do practice then only you can do the problem definitely one problem two problems we can get from this three phase induction motor chapter if you have any doubt ask me in the next class thank you